You are listening and watching to a very special podcast. Here we continue more on Barrer Devlin. Enjoy. Ben was in that prison for some time, but now it looks like everyone was gathered there to observe him and see what he does or says anything. He's not saying anything, Lola said in an irritated voice. Just give it patience. Who knows what he might say? Just give him time. Or whispered. It was kind of tedious because the guy was keeping to himself, like thinking. His eyes underneath, he had like dark circles. He looked like he was going to crack any minute. He looked like he hadn't slept or eaten in days. However, Barrera knew something was wrong because she let her eyes scan the room. This made Solo concern. What is it? He asked. Are you suddenly having a vision? Shinoa asked with concern. She's here, Rurer said. Shinoa looked horrified. What? She? You mean? That's right. Just then, somebody came from the other side of that prison. A girl with long hair, but some of her hair was braided, while others had a bit of strands, like she looked like she was stressed. You felt his heart stop for a moment. Rosemary, he gasped. It's her. It's Rosemary. He began to feel himself shake. Mika grasped onto Yu's shoulders. Hey, you. Are you all right? I'm fine. I'm fine. I. How did she get in here? That's when. Rosemary got on her knees and was talking to Ben. It sounded like a hushed whisper. She was gently caressing his hands, his face, but also she kept touching his forehead for some reason. Barrera squinted her eyes. What the heck is she doing? However, she realized she can't see what's going on inside their heads. Damn, she must have blocked it. Crap, now I can't really know what's going on in there. That's when Rosemary said out loud, Ben, say that you need me. Ben didn't answer. That made Rosemary angry as she used her telekinetic force to make him speak. I said, would you kindly say that you need me? Rosemary begged. Ben felt himself shaken. However, he managed to get the words out. I need you, Rosemary. Please, Rosemary, help me. He said in a begging tone. Oh, please. There's no way she's going to get him out of here. Justine said, rolling her eyes. But she was soon surprised to see Rosemary was breaking all of the windows in the tight airspace, breaking them apart. Everyone was shocked to see when all of a sudden Barrera shouted, everyone out, hurry, get away, now, she exclaimed. All at once, they tried to leave, but Rosemary managed to stop them all in place, making them forced to part like the Red Sea. Justine would not let her pass and try to grab Ben and Rosemary. When Rosemary somehow spoke in the same voice tone, or rather mimicking Ben's voice, Brer was shocked to hear that Somehow, Rosemary must have absorbed the powers of a certain superhero. 
Rosemary managed to help Ben escape. Justine and Barrera tried to go after them, but it was too late. Barrera grimaced. <clears throat> Darn it! They're gone. They're all gone. That's when Barrera felt something prickling inside of her head. All of a sudden, she could see something. It seemed Rosemary must have left her something in her head. That's when Barrera could see it in her mind. She could see Farid Bathory, Crowley. They were discussing amongst themselves. Alongside them was none other than Dirge himself. How they were plotting to get rid of Ben and Taylor. How much of a insane fool he was. Now Ben must have gone somewhere into hiding. And Rosemary is trying to keep his tracks clean. This made Barrer angry. Damn, we couldn't even get a good hit on him. But what did I just see? However, she thought to herself, they were going to backstab him? He's the bad guy here. Or maybe there's something more deceiving going on around. Maybe something I don't even know. This made her tremble in fear. Justine felt guilty. However, she apologized. Barrera assured her, no, it's fine. There's nothing much we can do now, huh? Well, no, I don't think you can, but um, listen. I have one more request, but I don't have to come with you. But look, there's something I found that Rosemary was hanging around in. I think you might want to check it out. Let me guess, you want me to get Lola and the boys to come? You could say that, Justine said. But you didn't hear it from me. Burr nodded. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Moments later, Lola was moaning. Oh, oh come on, you have to admit this was pretty fun, but I just want to check this place out. Uh-huh. Okay. You hear that, boys? One more place, and then we're done, okay? So, what is in here? I don't know. But it caught my attention. She could feel that piece of paper in her pocket. So I managed to find the place. It looked like an old warehouse. However, it was so dark that nobody could see a thing. Just then, they came across something very eerie. It was some sort of basement towards a warehouse. As if there was one. Somebody must have created one. They managed to head down into the stairway where they were greeted by some sort of shrine to Ben. It was all the memories, the first time they met, how Ben was the only one nice to them, like nobody else had been, Ophelia and everything else that had happened. Wow, this is kind of creepy. Lola said, yeah, it is. Who would do such a thing? Rosemary would, I know. That's when you look like he was going to throw up. Hey, come on, the shrine is not that creepy. No, that's not what I mean. Uh, have you seen this? He flashed a light onto something that made Barrera's heart drop. There were dozens of pictures. You and Mika when they were kids. How they were in the vampire city with their family. How their family was murdered. 
Ferret Bathory looked like he had his eyes X'd out with a permanent black marker. And also the words bastard written all over his face. And traitor, deceiver, antichrist, Lucifer written all over. Holy cow, Burr said. Then there were pictures of the Shinoa squad. There was a heart around you. There was one particular certain kind of other shrine of Shinoa. Some focused on her facial expressions, but also it concentrated on the backside where there was a diagram on how to do Shinoa's hairstyle. You then tipped his head sideways. Well, I can't believe it. She's been watching us this entire time? He found other photos. The ones where Burr and the others met them for the first time. And also how they were working together. There was even one of the hideout where they were staying at to keep away from the Japanese Imperial Army and the vampires. There was even reenactments made with doll houses and actual dolls. There were dolls splayed right onto the floor while one was standing by some sort of stand for dolls. And there was one in particular with blood, fake blood. It was supposed to represent you and how he witnessed his family died. And Mika's supposed death. There was also another one where you encounters a demon during the whole demon ceremony to get his curse gear. Also how he and Kimizuki met. Kimizuki with his sister. But the worst one of all was of you within the room with Kareto, Shinya, and also Mitsuba's sister in one room while in this other room had two dolls tied up and their feet had something around the ankles and they looked like they had mouths gagged by something and two other dolls were behind them holding up knives holy shit oh my god oh my god Barrera exclaimed oh uh, this is is this? Does she think this is funny? Kimizuki exclaimed. Why would anyone think this is funny? That's when you notice something. Hey, what's this? It was a projection screen. But what they saw on there was horrifying. They could see that Rosemary was just dancing like a normal ballerina in seemingly normal ballerina costume. But when the image suddenly widened, all of a sudden it showed of her dancing around people's corpses. But in previous shots were shown of people who were actually Horrendous people that picked on the weak, some who just got a kicked out of tormenting others. It was very horrendous. And that's where Rosemary and her sisters came along and killed those people. Coincidence? Not really. Thanks so much for listening and watching. See you next time.